Style Brandon League and Wealth Slamcast. Uh, we're talking about payback this week. We're talking about Ryback. A lot of things with Ack, ironically or unironically. I am your host, Brandon League, and like I said, the King of Bong Style. Join me in the two man booth and in effect because we're kind of just haphazardly throwing this together podcast together on a Friday morning, East Coast time. Um, yeah, it's it was literally big- almost midnight where I'm at. It was it was a big week this week, so I figured we should wait a while in case anything mm-hmm. develops. There was a big emerging story in wrestling. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about payback. Uh, but first, Nick, how are you? I'm good. I end up working a few extra hours today. And that fuck just money. Sit- yeah, exactly. Just relaxing at home and just getting uh, shit done. And yeah, I just came back from Civil War, and uh, nice. I don't know what I. Do. I don't know how my feelings are kind of mixed right now. I need to not. I need to talk about something else other than Civil War because this is going to be something that I'm going to be contemplating for the rest of the weekend. So that's why we're doing Slamcast now. <laughs> really. Um, really nice. Yeah. Uh, so we we'll might as well get right back into it. Um, there is a big story that broke this week uh, concerning the fact that Ryback is now no longer going to be on. WWE television, but the contract dispute has been his contract dispute has been settled with with the company. Um, he took to his personal thumb page and basically, you know, recited an entire manifesto as how he feels the pay scale of the business should be different, and almost as if there's a level of favoritism bestowed upon talents that routinely are victorious over the enhancement talents. He believes that all talents should be paid the same, and yes, those high-end level face talents or main event talents should get a little extra for for merchandise, but they never really get that anyway. Um, I stand with Ryback on this. I think a lot of people a lot of people have, you know, come out on you know, sense on either side. Um, but I, I, you know, I entirely agree with everything he's doing to improve his position. He is absolutely well within his rights to say, no, I'm no longer going to like any professional athlete. He's not going to perform under the, the, the bounds of his contract because he feels that they are unfair and he's not going to work until he has a, a, permanent long-term deal established. Um, this is no different than any other star athlete going out mm-hmm. uh, going out and doing it for his team. And he's really, Ryback, I think, is making a stance, really, um, as far as the, the commentary on the business as a whole. Because, yeah, there is you know something to do with this. This isn't, this isn't a real sport. It's where they shouldn't really pay the winners that much more than quote-unquote enhancement talent. Right, now, I, think, I understand I, that, you know, you're not going to pay someone like, you know, a... Uh, well, just, I'm, not, I'm not saying Ryback should get John Cena money, because I'm assuming right, John's but, his commitments to the business are a lot more, and John Cena's value to the company is a lot right. more than what, you know, than what he could contribute to, or than what his salary, base salary would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but there it's is, not like you should be, you know, it's not like you're going to pay someone like a Bo Dallas or John Cena money. No, I, like, I, 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 I see both ways. I do see it both ways. Like, I absolutely agree with, with everything Ryback is saying. Like, he's well within his rights to negotiate for a better uh, position. But, yes, I do see that you, you can't pay, you know, a Bo Dallas the same amount as a John Cena. Uh, but there should be some comparable scale, like the, the 
yeah. the gulf indifference shouldn't be that significant because I think mean, mm-hmm. I think John made close, close to like ten or eleven million dollars yeah. from WWE just from everything he does. And, yeah, he and does all... all the charity stuff. He does all the media. He's one of the big media guys. He all that. He's. I feel like this guy doesn't fucking sleep. And uh, I, I thought I think Triple H is the same way too, Robert. But yeah, I, I <laughs> um, there's, it's I, I don't know what Ryback's media commitment is or, or what he what he does, you know, off TV, mm-hmm. promotional wise. Uh, it's just it's gonna we haven't seen the end of the situation yet. It, no, I think, uh, and it's probably you know, not gonna end well for either party. Yeah, it's, um, well, you know, those spring cleaning cuts are coming up, and, um, well, there was a lot of, uh, just interesting news that has popped out this week, and I didn't even bring it up before the show, but, uh, Hogan is gearing up for another lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's, uh, I, I don't even want to Yeah, tackle. it's just, that's, we don't want to get into more of the Hogan stuff, but that was just Mudslinging upon mudslinging upon mudslinging, I mean. Yeah. We really don't need to talk about it until there's a definitive... No, it's just, again, complicated. this this situation is just... He's trying to get... This is lawyers. This is... Uh, it's going to lead me into a much larger commentary on... Uh, the legal... So, okay, we'll yeah. leave that alone. Uh, um, Adam Rose was suspended. Adam Rose... Yeah, he, he now submitted his doctor's note. I mean, I, I agree with Adam Rose if, if he... This is a legitimate, you know, medical reason why he had Adderall in his system. Then, then yes. But also, WWE should probably should have known about that, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't disclose that to him. Like, he's how long has he been taking taking, you know, this before? This, this is a regular uh, prescription medication for him. It should have shown up in previous drug tests that he has taken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you know it was an over. I guess an oversight in WWE's part, but you know, good on Adam Rose for uh, for doing his due diligence. Yeah, I absolutely, I completely taking agree. a stand too, because that's uh, uh, yeah, they, they're this I well, the right back thing and the Adam Rose thing. I think is ultimately all building towards one thing is, you know, potentially professional wrestlers or at least wrestlers in the WWE unionizing or having some sort of you know, collective bargaining with the company. I think we're really, we're really almost on the cusp of that. And it might actually take, like, a strike, a walkout of, of talent, like, talent walking out. And we're not going to perform under these under these circumstances. Um, you know, WWE couldn't replace all those talent scabs. Like, but no matter if, if there was a massive walkout, like, yeah. one day, if, like, like, got, like the worst worst case scenario... I, I, the way I'm picturing this in my head is if, you know, main event of Raw is going on, Roman Reigns versus John Cena or someone or whatever is, is in the ring, and then they just walk out. Mm-hmm. Everybody, not like except the referee and the commentators, have no idea what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. That's just... the only way, like, like I see ever see Khaled really achieving that level of parody with any other professional sports mm-hmm. faction. Because um, there's no way the WWE could, could replace that amount of talent that quickly. They would have to go mm-hmm. into some sort of emergency negotiation right there to get everybody back and then they'd mm-hmm. use it for an angle. They'd absolutely use it for an angle. But oh, I, yeah. I honestly I honestly think that that's what's that's what the way this the I guess the labor culture is like in professional wrestling with, with insurance costs and uh, everything else that, that that comes with it being a commodity of a, of an of a, of athletic commodity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's very close to seeing a wrestlers union or some sort of some sort of collective bargaining between labor and management. Yeah, these I think the Ryback instance and Adam Rose are all just just little little steps towards that. So we'll see, you know, where the where the future takes us. But 
you know, if any, if you could read the uh, tea leaves, if you will. Yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we're going in the future, but let's look at what happened here this past uh, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday was a big day, and, um, you know, I think just thoughts in general on payback, uh, I thought it was a solid pay-per-view. I mean, I think it's exactly... I enjoyed it. It's exactly what they needed to have after WrestleMania. You know, uh, Chicago, the Chicago crowd was always is always live. Um, they're always uh, always entertaining. Yes, they're all, they're on their game always. It's they're always a, they're they're always they're an, they're a crowd in and of itself. Like again, a Chicago crowd is different than a Philadelphia crowd. It's different from a New York crowd. It's from a Boston crowd. It's different from an Atlanta crowd or or wherever. Each the Chicago crowd though. They, they stand out among mm-hmm. the, the, the upper echelons of, of wrestling fans, um, and they were did not disappoint uh, this week. But enough about Chicago because we saw some great wrestling matches. Uh, I'm really... not going to break down every single match on the card. Don't need uh, to. But um, to. we'll start. We will hit up some of the highlights. Start from the beginning and uh, very we'll uh, scary. Biggest, we'll start with the biggest three of the night. I mean, at least okay. social media wise, um, because okay. it was one of those moments you never want to see in professional wrestling. Um, someone go completely limp and unconscious, and a match have to be be stopped like that. Especially someone who right now is entering, you know, a very, very, I shouldn't say precarious, but, you know, the door is to the, the world is just opening for Enzo Amore and Big Cass, and for him to have an injury at this point in time is just absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, it was revealed that the inevitable plans for that match were to having the Vaude Villains go over, but you never want to see a match like that end. Uh, in that way, with with one talent being completely unconscious, it almost looked like he was going into a seizure at times, which was you know really, really, really not good to hear. Um, you know, especially now with the WWE entering into this era of head trauma safety awareness, uh, you don't like to see someone getting knocked out by the by the middle ropes and then their head colliding with the mat and the ring apron. I mean, just, just brutal. And uh, our thoughts go out to Enzo. You know, had a quick recovery, but man, that's a momentum killer for those guys. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's uh sorry, I'm back, but uh, it's one of those things where it's cause I'm watching it and you see how Enzo hits the rope and it's like, well, it, it looked, it, put it this way, it looked a lot worse initially than it turned out to be, because when you first saw it at first, you're thinking, worst case scenario when someone hit the ropes, because the ropes are so tight in professional wrestling, is that someone broke their neck. Yep. And then when, when and, and then you're also thinking, oh no, not Enzo. But yes. Here, here is somebody who is entering in the prime of their potential for their career, just getting the, the, the push to the main roster, just getting the, the you know, shot at being number one contenders for uh, a, one of the most successful tag teams of, you know, recent memory. And, and to, to see it all go away, potentially, and it was, it was, a, it was a, one of them you question, you know, your own mortality and, and, uh, mm-hmm. You just wish nothing but, you know, safety for everybody who goes out here and, and, and risks their lives to entertain, risks their bodies to entertain you in, in such a manner. Um, yeah, it's, um, it, it was good because you, you saw him on the ground, you kind of saw him moving a little bit, so it's like, okay, this might not be serious. Well, see, I thought it was, I thought it was seizures is what I, what immediately what it was, but I mean, it was a, it was a perfectly textbook handled situation by uh, everybody involved. The referee stopped the match instantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, commentators weren't silent, but they were, you know, 
obviously visibly concerned for their, I'm assuming, friend and co-worker, uh, and the medical staff who, you know, there was a stretcher out there ready to get him out within, you know, three minutes of, uh, of the, uh, the, the incident. Um, I mean, it was, and, and, you know, everything did work out positive for Enzo. He didn't have to have an extended stay in the hospital. It was just, you know, check up and make sure everything was in place and, 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 and nothing was yep. grievously injured. I mean, we got the image later on of, um, of Kevin Owens and Big Cass. <laughs> and, um, oh God, Owens and the, that got memed to death. It's easy candidate, awesome. easy candidate for meme of the year. Uh, yes. Refresh Kevin. I mean, even in our own, uh, Facebook group. We had multiple fucking posts. We had one of Owens outside Vince's limo exploding, of him at a zoo, yeah. of him in that big selfie with David Otonga. Oh my god. Just, just, I mean, way to turn, Kevin Owens, way to turn a, what potentially scary scenario into a, a moment of levity and comedy. And joy. <laughs> yeah, and joy, which is just, again, if you're not following Kevin Owens on Twitter, why? You're missing out on one of the the snarkiest. Do you not enjoy fun. Huh? You don't enjoy fun. If you if you yeah. don't subscribe, if you don't follow Kevin Owens on Twitter, and you have Twitter, you don't enjoy fun. Mm-hmm. You just don't. Um, speaking of Kevin Owens, mm-hmm. in much positive news, him and Sami Zayn. Oh man, potential ass match. Potential candidate for pay per view and or match of the year. Yep. Uh, candidate. Um, I mean, we don't even have our first Slamcast Awards. I yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. Breaking my fucking balls over here. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting... I'm figuring it out, man. Sorry. I'm just, yeah, I'm busting your balls. Dude, but man, they put on a fucking badass match, and that's what... I, I guarantee you they had a little extra uh, oomph to put on something good after what just happened to Enzo. So they... Uh, yeah, they, there was definitely the the incentive to go out there and like kind of recover the crowd because the crowd was kind of sitting on their hands, you know, visibly, noticeably upset and shaken. Nervous up. and yeah, Nervous. So. There, were con- there was concern on behalf of Enzo because that's of all like of all the people for it to happen to for it to happen to somebody who is as just becoming as popular and just getting the chance to get over with the crowd. And he was somebody yep. who was that well loved by the crowd over that short of time is is was the real, you know, disturbing and, and almost really tragic thing about it, but thank God, you know, it all worked out in the end. And we got a great Kevin Owens Sami Zayn match afterwards. And again, I think these two you put these two in a ring together no matter what type of match it is, mm-hmm. no matter what the show is no matter where they are on the card, you you're gonna get a, a, a maybe not classic. I'm going to say classic match every time, but you're gonna get a great match every time, and that yep. just goes, you know, that's a fact at this point. You know, you want to have a good show, it, it, WWE. You want to get your crowd back. Just put one more time. I, I will watch. I could watch that match forever. I will never get sick and tired of seeing. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn wrestle each other under any guise or gimmick. Destined to do this forever. Yeah, I mean, bottom line. I, I obviously, you know, you have to refresh it at some point in time. Yeah. Other things, and then come back to each other. Maybe even have them do a tag team together. God, how weird would that be at this point? Oh, jeez. But like, it's pro wrestling. Anything could fucking happen, man. Yeah, anything could happen. Um. But great, great, great match from Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Um, save the show, save the show, because the show really could have gone off the rails at that point in time. They could have, they could have been, it could have been a wash in a sea of CM Punk chants. Oh yeah, and in Chicago they would. Speaking of speaking of CM Punk chants, by the way, Ryback in yes his, his last match on WWE television programming, maybe ever. Uh, classic Ryback moment. That's why I think Ryback, I think, finally, is just finally getting it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. we'll see. Uh, like, great it was moment. perfect, because it's... They're in Chicago, they yeah. all love punk, and, well, you have this... Yep. 
just this, this, the, their obvious history between the two. As yeah, much and you as... know, people you know, generally don't like Ryback. I like mm-hmm. Ryback, but that's just me. I, I tend to not follow the IWC a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I don't tend to go with the crowd. Exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It's a good way. So, side note. Uh, yeah. Speaking of great side notes, Kevin Owens on commentary, please. Oh, God, he, the, the whole after thing was great. He just goes on commentary, and he's and he had a good match out of Miz and Cesaro, and then all of a sudden, here comes Sami Zayn. He's like, yeah, this that, isn't over, motherfucker. Yeah, no, this, like, this is the way to have, that's how you build a feud, have it last through more than one segment. And then you have it bleed into another match, too. You have it bleed into this, and now it could have the Intercontinental title on the line between these guys. Which, again, you want to elevate the Intercontinental title back to its former prestige? There you go. That's the best way to do it. Right there. These four guys. Mm -hmm. Um, By the way, New Day. So we we, we kind of get swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. New Day, watching the match. Eating pizza <laughs> on beanbag chairs. Just when you think like, like there's a giant coming out of a giant box of cereal is the best thing that they could do, they continually find ways to 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 make me laugh. Yep. God, New Day rocks, man. New Day exactly. Rocks. This is what these guys do. I mean, there's a reason they're one of the biggest merchandise sellers of the company now. Um, topping yeah. them is uh, yeah, again, and it's, and it's been a year. It's been a year now since they've kind of, like, broken out from just being, you know, generic faces, and then they've get, mm-hmm. the crowd really wasn't dealing with it, feeling it that much. Mm-hmm. Now they've set themselves apart and just become amazing performers. No disposition, heel, or face. Yeah. It's one of the... It just... Uh, allow things to get over naturally and organically. And, and, just uh, and let allow, three guys... allow the performers to be themselves. Yeah. That's that's the key right there. Yep. So what uh, there was something else? Was there another good match on this before? Uh, the women's match, I, I kind the of women's wanted to... match is pretty good. Yeah, I thought I thought that was a very interesting finish. With the quote unquote Chicago screw job. Any excuse though to remind me that Charles Robinson Is... once went by Little Nate. Yes. I I'm loving Charlotte as a heel and Oh yeah. I, I think I that's I think been the biggest surprise I think of the women's division is the fact that Charlotte has become that good of a heel and continues on a week to week basis. Gets mm-hmm. better and better and better. And again, like her father, the ring, she really could be like the female version of her father, the 16-time women's champion. <laughs> Jeanette, who call start calling? You better start calling her the Nature Girl. That's all I'm saying. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Look, I'm convinced that there's a clock in Titan Towers that when it ticks down to zero, it's time to reenact screw job because they <laughs> seem to go back to this finish. Quite a bit. It's 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 a it's a road. It is a very popular popular finish. It's very well known in professional wrestling circle. Uh, it's it's a classic. You you, you always go back to your classics. The classics always work. That's okay. A and again, any excuse to watch to reenact and to relive the little nature run. <laughs> Some of. Again, some of the it is the best of the worst of that part of WCW. But WCW was a sinking ship at that point in time, but there were these little glimmers of just like, well, hey, suddenly of someone brilliance, still, yeah, at least someone's still having fun over there. Mm-hmm. Charles Robinson as Ric Flair's personal referee. Little mate. Uh, wasn't that what was that clip they showed on Raw? Was that like Slamboree '99 or? Well, oh, I can't remember who he wrestled. But yeah, he did. He came out and he had the full robe and everything. I'm gonna have to pull that up on the network <laughs> and watch it. But I mean, the match itself, I don't remember being good. But but well, just course, just but the the creative <laughs> itself was absurd, and that's how I like it. Um, 
but it was so absurd it actually worked in that late yeah. WCW. I still re- I still remember it. Like I still remember it, and that's what I will always. I still remember Charles Robinson as as little Nate. <laughs> um, but again, a great match by Charlotte. Uh, and it's good to see Natalia, you know, getting her shine, getting her moment, even if it is just to establish Charlotte as the the alpha female of the women's division. Yep. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to get a submission match between them at... Uh, Three uh, rules, yeah. yeah. Which was this, like, are we have we did kind of enter into this new, like, uh, we're calling it a new era. WWE seems to have a new era every other... Every 18 yeah. months or so. Yeah. Um, now Shane and Stephanie will be sharing control over Monday Night Raw, sort of like a do umber it or, a, you know, I don't know what to call it. but uh, It just it almost reminds me of Austin and Bischoff as yes. co-GMs. That's probably the best way to put it. And I mean, I was a big fan of... Raw GM Eric Bischoff. That guy, he was so damn good. Well, I think being... it was also just you're you're seeing Eric Bischoff in WCW, like or WWE rather. Like what? Like that? Oh at yeah. That time, it's like, like up is down. It's like it's me and Fox. Hell were froze down. over. Your feet are freezing as you're standing it, around. It's it's like seeing Dixie Carter showing up in, in WWE today. Like, just something so outside the realm of possibility, and it happened. We talked about that, by the way, me and Tone. We had this little jam show. I don't know if this will actually make the pod, but we were talking about ways to put Ethan Carter, to get Ethan Carter over. If in the event that, you know, WWE buys TNA just for the tape library, mm-hmm. you have Ethan Carter come in, and have him be, like, upset that the WWE has purchased his family company. I'm just like, holy shit, dude, that's fucking amazing. I would I would fucking watch the crap out of that angle. Like, that's... Oh, yeah. That, that's gold. And you, and, have, you have Dixie Carter as his manager. That's his aunt. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Holy shit. If there was shit. one person, female in wrestling, that would generate more heat... Than, or about as much, or if not more heat than Eva Marie, it'd probably be Dixie oh, Carter. Exactly, Dixie Carter showing up on a WWE show. It'd be like, holy crap. First of all, I mean, I'm sure WWE fans would be like, who's that? Who the fuck is this? Okay, mm-hmm. that's great. Oh, okay, she got who that is? Oh, I've only heard, I've only never heard her, I've never actually watched her before. Oh, okay. But just as a wrestling fan as a whole, like, what that would mean to the business. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So, that's, you know, WWE, if you're listening to this podcast, and you do go through with, you know, your purchase of, inevitable purchase of TNA, because, let's face it. Well, we know you listen. It's going to happen. Yeah, you're listening, you're stealing all our ideas anyway. Feel free to steal this one, too. Uh, and just, you know, not give me any credit at all. Um, <laughs> so, on to the next match, which I think was... Dare I say it, match of the night. Mm-hmm. Dare I say it, match of the night. I mean, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn set the table. Charlotte and Natalia kept it going. And then this match blew it all up and sent everybody, I think, home satisfied. I wasn't there, but I was satisfied as a wrestling fan watching that. I was on the edge of my seat actually thinking we might see AJ Styles win the WWE title. That's how well that those two guys, yeah. uh, yep, you know, pulled that story. I mean, we had the old, um, and I mean, we're talking about the Shane Stephanie thing. Bled yeah, over, sorry, bled over right into sorry, the- sorry, yeah, exactly. And this is this is you know what I why I think the Shane Stephanie thing is going to go because we saw the uh, count out that happened first Shane after the out. the flying forearm through the table, yeah. which looked the awesome. Table. Again, yeah, we talked about there were two two potential future match of the year candidates for the Slamcast Awards recognizing ex- outstanding achievement in the field of excellence whenever we have the first one, which is probably the next week because we're probably not going to have a whole lot to talk about over the next couple of weeks. Maybe. We're not going to say. Um, mm, yeah, so and we also saw Stephanie come out, and so we saw two restarts to this match. Yeah, and then the DQ, the 
in a, I and I, I was questioning was like was that inadvertent or was that on purpose that he shot to the balls? I, I like I like this ambiguous ambiguous thing that they're kind of doing with Roman. Like he, he's not quite heel. He's obviously not totally because the American audience is not adjusting. I don't know what Roman's reaction is abroad, so that's why I'm just I'm immediately prefacing that. Like I think a lot of wrestling fans true are truly ignorant of that fact. Like they still think that the WWE product is you know, solely just an American thing that doesn't get consumed by anything else. And, you know, there might be people that actually enjoy that. So maybe that's, maybe that's why we're getting Roman Reigns because people in India like Roman Reigns. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just ranting at this point. But Roman Reigns and AJ Styles absolutely tore the house down. Uh, I was yeah. I was on pins and needles, man. I I really thought we we could see AJ Styles win the WWE title in Chicago, even if it's just for one night. Like that would have been the perfect time, mm-hmm. just to, just even just to give AJ that moment too. I thought would have been would have been a really great moment, and with with Gallows and Anderson there too. Um, I mean, and that's kind of you know it bled in. We had Gallows and Anderson come in, beat down Roman. You know, Roman's kicking out of two. Out of two, out of everything. He's doing he's doing his thing that he has to do because he's playing the strong man right now. He's playing the, the unstoppable baby face. Real, real strong. Yeah. And, man, he looked real strong in this. It was... Well, they, they, I, think, I think they really they came out and they said, all right, let's, let's tear the house down. I mean, Austin did come out and say on his, on his podcast that he felt that, you know, Roman's work rate as far as duration, he doesn't have the stamina I think he needs to, to go out and put on these 30-minute matches that, that is required of the guy. Um, but I think, I, I mean, this match, to me, was fine. They did a good job of, of camouflaging that by having him do plenty of other things, having other people do that. So that's working for now for some people. Let's, I was just say keep doing that. Um, mm-hmm. But at the end of the night, Roman Reigns was your WWE champion, and... We will see again AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns again. Yeah, because after this, we ended with a backstage segment with the McMahons, and we basically got weird the end that, of it set. Weird that the pay per view ended on a backstage segment too. Like that's if you yeah, like, it was it was weird seeing that, but you know what? I like it. It yeah, doesn't. It's... It sets up your next pay per view in three weeks. Mm. You have your main event. You have an Extreme Rules match. So now there's more. You know, and then even what we had on Raw, which was main evented. Well, but first, I want to bring up the the awesome truth or the the fucking. Oh my god! <laughs> Damn, that was. I laughed way too much at that than I should, by the way, because or, yeah, Raw was great too, by the way. Uh, Gorgeous truth, the uh, average oh looking god. truth. I and me, Tyler me, had this look like I'm gonna fucking kill you, bitch. Not even like that was that was obvious, but when they got into the ring. And then, like, right before the bell rang, Archery hands him the do-rag, and he puts it on, and he still was man- able to maintain the straight face. Like, that's completely normal for him to do that. Fuck, that was hilarious. Like, I well, laughed for been five to ten minutes, probably. <laughs> at yeah, just and that... Tyler is wearing a do-rag. I <laughs> laughed longer at him wearing a do-rag than he had the actual do-rag on. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, a side note, Tyler Breeze made a... One uh, return to NXT at a house show in, I think, Kansas against um, Shinsuke Nakamura. I, well, I think they, they need people, they need bodies to, capable bodies to work Nakamura, and Tyler Breeze currently isn't doing anything else. But still, you know, that's a hell of a surprise for those fans in attendance. Yeah, um... Just great, just great segment. This is it's a weird segment, like this this whole thing. It was kind of definitely cobbled together between the lower half of the car. Like here's these four people that haven't done anything in a while. Give them something to do. But yep. they did that and they did a good job with it. So let's see more of this maybe. Yeah. God, I really just advocated for Fong you know, to make an angle. Weird. Uh what else happened on Raw? Oh yeah, the Bullet Club made him into Raw. Yes, like Gallows, Anderson, and AJ Styles against Roman and the Usos. 
if you call it what you don't call them that, call them that, whatever, it's still the Bullet Club to me. Damn it! I I I, I, I looked at that and I was I was watching Raw by myself, and I just had to say I said it out loud: the Bullet Club main evented Raw. I think it should be the title of the show: the Bullet Club main evented Raw. Yes. <laughs> That's how that's how profound of a of a moment that was. Yeah, you have three guys that I mean, well, technically Gals was in WWE before, but particularly, you know, you have this particular set of guys: Gals, Anderson, and AJ Styles. AJ Styles, who had never worked, you know, now he's in the WWE, which is, you know, that's a blow away moment. Still, in that, that still has that still has some he, juice to it. Yeah. Yeah, you have Carl Anderson who made his name in Japan, bottom line, he was a Japan guy, and now you have, it's the Bullet Club, the fucking yeah. Bullet Club. Yeah, man, it's it's 2016, and Bullet Club proper main event of Raw against Roman Reigns and the Usos. I don't need to, they don't need to refer to him as that, I just think, just keep putting him together, and that's... That's all that matters. I mean, we got to know a big uh, storyline going. Is AJ going to sign with these guys? Because they uh, afterwards, they handed him a chair, and he ha- AJ, has, uh, AJ hesitated in walloping Roman over the head with it. Mm-hmm. I think, like, you know, this will go... Some people say a certain somebody from NXT might be brought... I, I, you asked me this two, three weeks ago. I would have said absolutely, like that's absolutely what's going to happen. Now I'm less and less sure of it, especially since that person has dropped a certain title of a certain developmental promotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, to a certain Simone so, submission yeah. machine. Yeah. Which? Yes. You know what? I don't want to put any stock in. There's like, oh, is he going to show up? Is yeah. yeah. There's always going to be that speculation for the next however long till he shows yeah. up. Again, I won't believe he's being called up until he actually exactly. shows up. And until then, more Bullet Club on him. Oh, please. Yes. Please, 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 please. Just, yes, just we need more going. Gals and Anderson just wrecking people on the roster. AJ, yep. you know, solidifying himself as a main event level guy in the WWE. And I think he just, you know what it, you know what it is? I think AJ is finally proving himself that he is as good as everybody said he was. And that he, and it's, I would say, a shame that he had to go to the WWE to do it, but that's where you, you, you solidify your, your legacy and your reputation. AJ Styles just made himself as an all-time great. I'm not saying like he's in that conversation of all-time, all-time greats like Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, but, you know, he, but, for, yeah, his, he for his era, he is an all-time great. Easily to do one of the best in the world. I mean, he could be the he very very realistic possibility. He could be the only person ever to hold the TNA, IWGP, and WWE heavyweight title. And NWA world heavyweight title as well. And WWE heavyweight title. Yes. Uh-huh. Damn. Just, I mean, just saying. He's already the only guy, and he will be the only guy ever to. Wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom and then at WrestleMania. At the same year. Same damn yeah. year, man. Yeah, man. So AJ Styles, so I think they, they shouldn't be gun shy and to not put the title on him. Do it at some point in time, just for that moment. You have <laughs> it doesn't have to be now. It doesn't have to be six months from now. But it's at some point in time before AJ Styles never really packed it in with WWE. Give and he decides to ride off in the sunset and... Give the man a damn championship. It doesn't have to be, you know, like 20 fucking reigns, but man. Just, just I, I just want that just want moment. That, I, that I mean, moment. And he AJ deserves it, too. So, uh... We've hit all yeah. the beats, man. Yeah, it was... Respect. I feel like there was something else, but I think we, I think we have covered it. I like, like I said, I like where shit, where Raw's going moving forward with Shane and Stephanie. Like Stephanie has to like play nice with people now, and but she could still be a bitch as we saw, like she, she was with Ambrose. Um, 
Rest in peace, Mitch. All right, Mitch, right, the plan, by the way. Which, again, how awesome is Dean Ambrose at this point? Dean Ambrose can literally get over a plant. Yes. It's like anything associated with Ambrose. A plant. And I, think, and I think it's what it was. It's like, I mean, he's trying to test himself. It's like, I'm so over at this point in time. I could get over, looked around him, saw a potted plant, and get over this plant. <laughs> Dean Ambrose could probably. Literally, uh, uh, we, the analogy gets used all the time. Dean Ambrose could literally get over a broom. Yes. But very few people could get over inanimate objects. Chavo Guerrero, Perry Saturn, mm-hmm. Dean Ambrose. Yes. High okay. company, Sir Ambrose. High company. <laughs> so here's a question I saw is, what if Roman ends up holding the title for 435 days? Oh, I think the internet will collectively wet itself. I mean, it will... It'll, and then the sun will rise again the next day. Yes. Um, it's, 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 would it have, I could see them doing that. I, I don't see it's going to happen this time, but at some point in time, WWE is going to want to break that record, expunge that record from their Punk. unless he comes back. Uh, but, uh... Punk's not it, coming back. I, I don't think, I don't think, I think that bridge has been burned, but you never say, never say never. But, Anything is possible. Nope. Special wrestling. But, yeah, I will say I did see a tweet from uh, AJ Brooks, and she's finalizing her book. Oh, man, there's going to be some stuff written about that. Oh, boy, let's see if that bridge wasn't burned before. It's definitely going to be burned now. So I am looking forward to that book. <laughs> oh, man, the, the, our, my friends over there at uh, What a Maneuver, the wrestling t-shirt company, have a Tyler Breeze Shinsuke Nakamura shirt. This is the king of style breeze. That's good. Nice. That's good. Uh, Iron Cheek Tweet of the Week. Iron Cheek Tweet of the Week. <laughs> Jim, I dumped him! I wanna know, are you the man? Or are you a fucking piece of shit? No good motherfucker! Fucking bullshit! Love that music. Um. It's not. I wish I could put a picture as the Iron Sheep Tweet of the Week. But it would really be improper, but I'm gonna just describe this picture anyway. We had. Recently, if you, you know, unless you follow the news, it's mm. been on the rock. Uh, Republican presidential nominee Ted Cruz campaign this week, and Iron Sheep tweeted out a lovely picture of him, a Photoshop picture, obviously, of him putting Ted Cruz in the camel clutch. <laughs> I yes. wish, I wish I could convey a picture as the Iron Sheep tweet of the week, and that could be that. But I will, I will give you an actual, you know, verbal Iron Sheet Tweet of the Week. Uh, what better movie, Space Tam Jew or the Chris Brosh Jabroni of the Earth? <laughs> Keep it old school, man. The Chris Brosh hate never gets old. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway. That's your Iron Sheet Tweet of the Week. Fucking bullshit! Alright, plug, plug, any plug, plugs? Yeah, I'll be uh, editing this sucker probably tomorrow after I get off work, and yeah, I'm over on YouTube, Gaming Pegasus 187, Twitter, Gaming Pegasus 187, Facebook, Nick Horacek, uh, Wrestling Slash MMA Revolution is the Facebook group, post up yeah. Slamcast there every week, Saturday morning, Friday night-ish, whenever. Whenever it goes up. Whenever I can get around to, if I don't you go know. on Friday night, I get hammered, but yeah, we I know. We don't do the schedule gimmick over here, man. It's all free form. Oh, well, they just tweeted a picture. I don't know if they just tweeted a picture, but it's... The, the, the Good Brothers tweeted a picture of the classic pose. Oh, that's that's just... That does it for me. Sorry. It, it, it distracted me. It distracted me. I just saw it. I didn't say they official, but somebody put it up. It was very... Oh, God. The Bullet Club's an motivated event for all people. Like, that's the world we're really. Yes. What a but, magic time to be alive. Oh, yeah. Uh, Instagram, Xbox Live, Wii U, Pegasus, uh, Sen, The Extreme Enigma, Twitch, Pegasus, 187. I mean, I'm all over the fucking yeah, place. Yeah, there, there are places to find you. Uh, 
Uh, Brandon, I'll open there the Twitter is. if you want to get and hear all my random musings about whatever it is that's going on in my mind. Uh, Three boys, a goat, and a dancing bear. Mm-hmm. Listen to that. It's a wrap-up podcast of Ice and Fire. If you're into the Game of Thrones. If you're not into the Game of Thrones, you can like the page anyway and make me feel good. With it, but that's on you. I'm not going to put that out. I'm not going to foist that upon you. Uh, Premier Pals is my is my football podcast. I am the human podcast machine, basically. Uh, getting that trademark too, by the way. Thanks, Taz. Uh, so go check out all of my podcasts wherever they are. I make, diligently post post them in the links. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, support independent wrestling. Independent, independent wrestlers. Uh, these are just people trying to make a living, and uh, if you got if you have a spare shekel and you're entertained by anything they do, the least you could do is uh, you know help out. So uh, for Nick Harachek, I'm Brandon Lincoln saying go forth and spread beauty and light.